I wanted to focus on that second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. It's used at many, many weddings. It's a, it's a, it's a really great and inspiring reading. It's about the centrality of love. St. Paul says, as we just heard, if I do not have love, I am a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And I think this is a great reminder for all of us of the importance of doing what we do with love and out of love. Father RJ and I could give the most eloquent, intelligent, and insightful homilies, but if we don't love you, if you don't feel that we care about you, it's all empty. And I can say, we do love you. I do love you. I'm already uh, having anticipatory grief as, you know, retiring this summer, moving on. I'm going to really miss all of you, and I look so look forward to seeing you. We just ordained uh, Joseph Williams, uh, auxiliary bishop of our archdiocese, and one of the things that was clear about him is that he was a caring pastor. I think what I've seen and observed, people care much more that their pastor cares about them and cares for them than maybe homilies and so on. I was talking to a friend recently about a given uh, their pastor, and he said, well, he's not a great homilist, but he really cares about us. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you, hopefully you feel that. I know one of the best compliments I ever received uh, was from a parishioner early on, as uh, one of our parishioners said, and she was a school mom as well, she still is a school mom, and she said, Father Warren, you love us. And so that, uh, that, that was, I couldn't get a better compliment than that. Um, you who are parents, you can provide lavishly for your kids and give them all kinds of opportunities, but if you don't love them, if you don't give them love, they're gonna still go away feeling empty. Uh, teachers uh, can deliver the perfect lesson, but if they don't love their students, their students won't grow. Doctors and nurses can deliver the most perfect treatment. But if they don't love their parents, they won't be true healers. Um, Father RJ has talked about Ted Lasso, and a number of you have watched Ted Lasso. The most recent issue I watched with some of my community members, Ted Lasso was seeing the therapist, and he said to her, you don't love me, you don't care about me, you're just doing this for money. And she said, no, you know, I do care about you. Yes, I'm getting paid, but I do care. And to have a healing relationship, there has to be that care present. One of the things that I always feel inspired by is people at checkout counters, when they do what they do with kindness and love. Uh, there's, there's, uh, it's, it's, it could just make your day, right? I'm sure you've all experienced that. We've all experienced that. You just, whether it be at Cub or Walgreens or CVS or whatever it is, you just go and that person is just kind and loving. And, and it's wonderful, it just makes your day. Uh, this is Catholic Schools Week, as I mentioned, and I can honestly say that there's a lot of love in our parish school, and I think those of you who are parents there, those of you who are graduates, those of you who are current students, uh, you will uh, attest to the fact that there is a lot of love over there. Uh, our teachers truly love their students and care about them, and it's beautiful when I go over there and I see teachers, uh, you know, bending over and just really caring, uh, really listening, uh, or Carol Nye drying a student's tears in the front office, or Elizabeth Timish. Uh, it's, it's really beautiful to see. And of course, Pat Lofton too, how kids come into his office. He's not the scary principal, although he's probably, there's a little bit of that too, I hope, uh, but you need that, Can't, gotta have that. But uh, students and parents, uh, feel comfortable coming in and talking with Pat. Uh, and he does, uh, I've, uh, one of the things I've just been amazed at, at how he, he, he listens to, you know, kids will mess up, right? And, uh, and, you know, our kids are no exception. But he talks with kids, he asks them, you know, and, and helps them through it, and, and talks with their friends, and talks with their teachers, and talks with their parents. And I think 
so I think our school is an is a example of a loving, loving place. Uh, St. Teresa of Lisieux, we have her statue there on the, on the side altar, uh, known as the Little Flower, said she was not called to do great things, but to do small things with great love. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, there is more hunger in the world for love and appreciation than for bread. Uh, she said, I, I don't do great things, I do small things with great love. And she also said, peace begins with a smile. And St. Paul, in his letter uh, to the Corinthians, chapter 13, gives some great reminders and great uh, description of love. You say, well, what does love look like? I think that, that reading really shows what love looks, looks like. Love is patient, love is kind. And when I read that, love is kind, you know, we're all aware of there's so much anger in the world, uh, so much anger on, you know, on road rage, uh, people uh, exploding at, at, at service people, uh, people, uh, exp you know, exploding, getting angry on, on, uh, on airplanes, uh, in stores, uh, people just, get really, really angry. And I just want to say, for, for goodness sake, um, you know, just be kind. I think Emily Post had, had an insight. Let's, if we just began with manners, <laughs> you know, if we just started with good manners, that's not a bad place to start, to really treat people with respect and courtesy. And there are a lot of, a lot of bad manners out there and hopefully, and probably, most of us, including myself, have had bad manners at times, but hopefully we're trying to have good manners. So let's, let's hear it for Emily Post. Um, also, love does not seek its own interest. It's not selfish. And love is not jealous. And every so often I hear people confess being jealous. We are called rather to uh, rejoice in the good of the other, not to compare and despair, but to rejoice. You know, isn't it good that this person has experienced this success or, or these good things. We shouldn't be jealous, but we should rejoice in their good. Uh, love does not brood over injury, but bears all things and endures all things. Those of you who are parents sometimes have to endure all things. Uh, sometimes you, with your spouse, you have to uh, endure some things or bear it with some things. Uh, in community life, that is true as well. Uh, we have to put up with each other. Uh, I think I told you the story when I was at Red Cloud Indian School and I had this one class uh, of, of students uh, that was really, uh, really, th these, these young people grew up in poverty, uh, alcoholism, uh, sexual abuse, and a lot of them were really angry. And it was tough to go into that classroom and I remember uh, in my prayer I'd say, Lord, help me to love them no matter what. Let, help me just to love them. That's p part of this. Uh, bearing all things. Uh, love hopes all things. Love is always hopeful. I love this one. Love is not pompous, inflated, rude, or quick-tempered. <laughs> you know, we all get quick-tempered at time, right? Uh, maybe pompous, I don't know. But, you know, love is, you know, loving people are humble. They put the other first. Love never fails. So faith, hope, and love remain these three, but the greatest of these is love. So I think this reading from St. Paul today challenges us to do what we do with love. And I think that's a great reminder in, as we begin, move into February. I won't ask for a show of hands, but uh, February is a month where we can get a little crabby at times. Uh, anybody get crabby during February? You know, it's that kind of tunnel month. Uh, it's not, you know, spring is a, is a ways off yet. Uh, so it's a good reminder as we move into February to do what we do with love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.